Alright, so what's going on guys? My name's Chopper. Welcome back everybody to a brand new video on the channel. Today, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be ranking every single attachment in PUBG from worst to best. A big part of learning PUBG and getting good at it is honestly just getting an understanding of all of the attachments and what their all their functions are and the preferred way that you like to play getting your perfect setup for that. So what I'm going to be doing is ranking all these attachments from worst to best and hopefully giving you guys a better understanding of which ones are worthwhile you're taking and then which ones you should just leave behind. But just before we get into all that, ladies Ladies and gentlemen, the support on these PUBG videos has been honestly overwhelming, and uh, you've been able to get over 2,000 likes on every single video that I posted within the past month, which is literally ridiculous, and uh, I think today we can raise the bar a little bit. I'll give you guys a challenge. We're going to aim for 3,000 likes on this video. It's a pretty big goal, but I know you guys could do it, and also, not to mention, if you are brand new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe and stick around for more videos just like this. I'll be posting this type of content very often, and also, not to mention, I'm going to be live streaming this game really soon and getting into it regularly, so... Hopefully you're excited for that as am I. And also, if any of you guys are brand new and haven't already joined my Discord server, it's in the description if you'd like to go and join up a PUBG community. It's a great place to be. If you don't have Discord, go and make one. It's free. It's a really great way for you to get more involved with me personally and that sort of stuff. Stay up to date with my content and be just a little bit more close to the channel, I guess. But with that being said, guys, all that stuff out of the way, get ready for this. Buckle down. There are a lot of things that we need to talk about today because there's a ton of attachments in this game. So grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfortable, and uh, let's get into this. So coming in at the worst spot on this list of Dishonor is going to be none other than the Crossbow Quiver. What this essentially is going to do is take a really, really niche weapon, which is of course the Crossbow, and a weapon that's not super practical at all, and just make it a little bit easier to use. It's going to quicken your reload up a little bit, but to be honest, it's not worth it. Just speaking in a hypothetical world, if you could pick any one attachment in the entire game of PUBG to have, and you go with the Crossbow Quiver, you, uh, you might want to see a doctor. But the attachment that's taking the spot just above that, it's really not that good though, is a new one. And in fact, you might not have even ran it at all how because of how brand new it is and how unpractical it is as well. But this is going to be the shotgun duckbill. What this does is reduce the pellet spread vertically, but increases it horizontally. So it's almost like, in a way, the inverse of the shotgun choke, which we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. But it's just not that great. Now the attachment above that is something that if in this situation you have it, yeah, go ahead and put it on. There's no harm in it, but it's also not in your best interest to go and chase this thing. But this is the stock that goes on the micro Uzi. Now, this is going to increase your weapon stability, which is pretty nice. But another weird thing is that it'll make your ADS time slower. So it's kind of like a give and take there and you have to decide if that's worth it or not. But I don't think it's that great and I don't tend to use the micro anyway. So that's not very high up on this list. Now starting to approach the mid tier attachments, but not quite there yet, is going to be bullet loops for both shotguns and sniper rifles, such as like the Car 98. Now this is essentially what the quiver does, which is all the way at the bottom of our list, increases the reload time. But it's on weapons that are actually useful, right? The Car 98 people tend to run a lot. And also, if you're a shotgun kind of guy, then uh, bullet loops are going to be great for you as well, as they do take a little bit to reload. However, in the grand scheme of things, the actual reload time decrease that you get is very minuscule, and it's hardly noticeable sometimes, so I don't think it's a huge priority in my opinion. Now, the attachment coming above that, which I still don't think is crazy important, but is good to have in the right scenario, is going to be the shotgun choke. And what this does is decrease the overall spread of the pellets, so making like longer shots and hitting people out a little bit of a range much, much easier. Now, the next attachment above that is something that I'd recommend as it's pretty much practical for all the sniper rifles except for one really which is going to be the cheek pad uh, aside from the bolt action ones all of these single tap sniper rifles are going to benefit from this attachment as it's going to increase your weapon stability while your aim down sights overall and stuff like that now the only downside to this is that when it comes to the bolt action rifles like the AWM, the Car 98, and the M24, that if you have a cheek pad, you're not really going to benef benefit from it too much, but if it's there, you might as well put it on. Now the next attachment is going to go in the same place, like on the actual charts, as this last attachment does, but this is going to be the stock that goes to the M4 and the Vector and those type of weapons, but because these are so practical on very common weapons, you're always going to want to have at least one if you're, if you're an M4 kind of guy like myself, and you don't happen to have one on your person, if you find a stock at least pick it up it's going to increase your weapon stability if you do happen to come across one of those and uh, there's no reason not to take it now i'd say those are the last of like the kind of the lower tier attachments that you can definitely live without but now we're getting to the mid tier ones which you should pretty much have every single game regardless and taking this spot is going to be none other than the fast mag the quick draw mag this one's pretty self-explanatory it's going to increase your reload speed on every single ar or even a dmr if you want to put it on it and why would you not ever take this you know what i mean everybody wants a faster reload 
But there's a couple other mag attachments that in my opinion are going to be way more worth your time than even this one and this is going to be the extended mag. Now what this does is it doesn't affect your reload time at all however it's going to give you a little bit more in your magazine so for the vector it gets a massive jump up to 25 rounds per mag and then usually for the assault rifles it goes from about 30 to 40 and uh, each gun is a little bit different but I would always recommend this over a fast mag as when it comes to like one on one gunfights just having the more bullets in your first magazine is pretty much all you should ever need to win that fight anyway and you you shouldn't have to reload a ton unless you're in a squads game. And also I should probably mention if it wasn't clear I'm generalizing these attachments when it comes to these so like I'm not going to go over the difference between an extended for an assault rifle and extended for a pistol as it really doesn't matter they do these same things so just assume that all these attachments apply for all of their respective weapons. And that being said the best attachment for the magazine on all weapons given that is going to be the extended quick draw mag. It takes both of the ones that we just spoke about the one with the fast reload and also having more per magazine and just combines them into two. Unfortunately the extended quick draw and just the regular extended look kind of similar in the heat of battle so make sure you know what you're grabbing as uh honestly better just to have the latter now at this point you can probably get away without mag attachments i wouldn't recommend playing without it but these next upcoming attachments are going to be the ones that are absolutely necessary if you want to perform in any way whatsoever so these are going to be like the the rest of these are going to be grips and sights and also all the muzzle attachments if applicable so coming in at this spot is going to be the flash hider for all the weapons now this is a really really good attachment that if you have it and you don't care about hiding your flash or if you have a suppressor there's ways to use them in different ways now the flash hider does of course exactly what it says on the box which is you know suppressing the muzzle uh the brightness that it puts out but also at the same time a lot of people don't understand is that using a flash hider over suppressor can be beneficial because the flash hider gives you some recoil control that the suppressor does not and that's why people were really confused a couple of videos ago when i said when it's in the final circle and distance doesn't matter then throw on the flash hider instead of the suppressor because you're number one going to get your brightness kind of muffled a little bit and also at the same time you will have that recoil control so i would recommend using that but even with all those bonuses, I still don't think it's overall better than the suppressor itself for most of the weapons, especially for sniper rifles and more kind of the DMR section of things. This is going to be your best friend for staying low and placing a lot of shots without people knowing where you are. Unfortunately, however, with the suppressor, you don't get that little extra bit of recoil control that you would with the flash hider. But just in case that's your thing, then there's another attachment that's going to be better for you, which I think is the best by far out of all the muzzle ones. And this is going to be the compensator for every single weapon. This is going to significantly reduce all of the recoil on your weapons and it's so good if you're having to spray with an assault rifle it'll be much much easier to control and you'll notice the difference right off the bat so if you have a compensator and you plan on spraying with maybe an m4 or a scar something like that take the compensator with you now at this point you're probably like all right chop i can live without the muzzle attachments but one thing i can't live without is grips and i got you don't worry i'm gonna explain all the grips what you should do and which ones you should grab in the situation at hand and honestly these might surprise you now, just in case you didn't know this, the worst grip of all, which is honestly, I don't think you should ever take it for any reason whatsoever, is the lightweight grip. Now, the reason why this is so bad is it does slightly decrease the time that your recoil is going to come back center, but it also increases your vertical and horizontal recoil. Like, how is that in any way a good trade-off? Trust me, I've tried to play with this grip for a good bit, and all it's going to do is make your weapons feel a lot more shaky and just more unpredictable. You might as well be better off without a grip if that's your only choice. Like, I don't know if they're going to fix it or something, but please don't take the lightweight grip right now. It's just not very good. I don't know. Something's telling me that this is like a troll attachment. You know what I'm saying? I got my suspicions, but the lightweight grip is a no-go for me, but it's still a grip at the end of the day, I guess. Now, a better grip than that, which really is not hard to beat, but is very uh, like higher up on this list of overall attachments, is going to be the angle grip now what's great about this is that it's going to significantly reduce your horizontal recoil which is very good for spraying but also at the same time you get a small negative where it's going to decrease your weapon stability so if that's a fair trade-off to you then run the angled grip if you struggle with controlling horizontal then uh, this might be the one that's calling your name but it's it's overall good grip but i don't still don't think it's the best now the grip that i think is overall better than the angled in my opinion but now still one of the best but it is so far up there and i love it and is going to be the thumb grip now this is good for both single tapping and spraying as it's good to reduce your vertical recoil but slightly increase the horizontal recoil but i would recommend this one on cl on close quarters combat weapons like the m4 the ump or something because you're also going to get an ads increased speed 
But the grip that almost reigns supreme is not quite at the top, but is still a brand new one is the half grip. And this is the king of spraying. It's going to be the best one for overall control, just for if you're firing in full auto. And the reason why I enjoy this one so much is because it's very niche. Like if you're going to be spraying, half grip is what you want always, no matter what. It reduces both vertical and horizontal recoil and gives you a decreased recoil recovery time, which are all amazing bonuses. But that doesn't quite compare to the number one grip, in my opinion, in the game. Still the overall reigning kings that's been here since day one the pimp daddy is the vertical foregrip if this is the number one grip for single typing overall it is not a bad spring grip either as a lot of it just consists of being vertical so it makes it significantly easier to control always have a vertical grip if it's in your inventory it's going to help out every single weapon so overall grips are super important but i also think the most important thing that overall you can have as an attachment in PUBG are going to be the sights and scopes you can apply to your weapons as this is where it really comes down to being important now coming in at the best scope that we have or i guess the worst scope out of this but still a great thing to have overall is the 2x scope now calm down lads this isn't me saying that the 2x is a bad attachment to have overall in fact having a, a scope or a sight like this is one of the most important things in the game however comparatively speaking with the rest of the attachments and also the other sites available this isn't one of the best ones all these attachments ranked are kind of are, still are on an overall basis but also i'm categorizing them into the respective slots so the site that i think i like better than the 2x is going to be the hollow because it still gets the job done essentially what a 2x can do if you can aim with it properly but it's also not this awkward middle ground where it's a little bit too zoomed in for close quarters but it's not far enough away to do anything with the distance but the 3x scope however i actually really enjoy i didn't like it at first but i'm not gonna lie it's starting to grow on me and this is a better version of the two times of course you have more magnification but i find just practically speaking it's a lot more easy to single tap people that are at a reasonable medium-ish distance but you can also use it up close if necessary it's not always going to be your best friend but it is possible but one that I like better than the 3 is the 6x scope. This is also a brand new one along with the one that we just previously spoke about. It ad got added into the game recently, and I think it's one of the most perfect long range scopes ever. Not quite as good as the 8x, but it will be great in every scenario. And on any weapon, the DMRs especially, it's phenomenal on. Now getting into the higher tier of these scopes and sights is the 15x. Now this is the only one unfortunately that is not a common spawn. Right now it's airdrops only. I'm hoping that they change that really soon and make us be able to find it up uh, like on the ground and stuff. That'd be nice. But I don't have a lot of practice with this scope for obvious reasons because it's pretty rare. But it's fun to use and it's so overpowered if you have a nice sniper rifle. Now something I find better than the 15x scope, believe it or not, is the red dot. You can never go wrong with this. This is like the standard default thing that you should have on any sort of close quarters gun. And this is the M4 and the Scar L and the M16's best friend if you're like single tapping or doing anything at a close to medium range. It's great for it. Even better than the hollow. I think way better than it. You really just can't beat the red dot. It's a classic. But approaching the top of this list for our best attachment, something better than the red dot in my opinion is the 8x scope. Now this is a lot more rare than the red dot of course. I think that goes without saying but it's the best long distance just overall sniper rifle scope now it's not quite like the 15 but it's better because it's not as rare and you'll get to use this quite often the 15 maybe you're lucky to get it one in 100 games as with the new airdrop like drops and their rates i don't ever get this scope anymore it's kind of sad because i want to use it again but the 8x is the overall most practical and best for any sniper rifle like awm m24 or anything unfortunately you can no longer put the 8x on any of the assault rifles you used to be able to and it was a lot of fun to use as well uh but they've recently changed it and now the highest magnification you can add to the ars is just unfortunately the 6x but coming in at the number one spot the best attachment in the game in pubg in my opinion is my boy the 4x scope lads what can I even say about this that hasn't already been said? This scope can handle itself at, surprisingly, even a close range. It's amazing for medium and long range as well. It can practically be applied to any weapon, so you won't have any, like, compatibility issues with putting on most of the weapons. So the 4X is going to be a very versatile thing, and it's also a really scope, like, a really easy kind of scope to use as well. It doesn't take a long time to get used to the bullet drop and the zero ring and all that sort of stuff for most of the guns, so I think it's an overall good one to start with if you're just learn trying to learn this game. So I'd recommend the 4X, and I think it's the best overall attachment in the entire game and you guys can let me know in the comment section what is your favorite attachment in PUBG it can be anything that we just previously listed up on this uh, list so anyways guys that's gonna be the video for today thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed it be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video subscribe to this channel if you are brand new as well and don't forget to join my discord server link will be down in the description but other than that guys thank you very much for watching once again I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all on the next live stream or the next video peace out